What is up, my fellow Harkonnens, and welcome to Is It Duno? I am Paul B. Trades, joined as always by my lovely new lady friend, E. Rich McCoy. Uh, the sun over Iowa is so beautiful <laughs> when it sets. Uh... <laughs> Well, I would probably fun. rather live in the Dune world than live in Iowa. <laughs> uh, we're also joined by the Static Shock himself, Florian Himsel. Which one was he? <laughs> He's a black superhero, I think. Oh, I saw someone in Dune who I must have missed. No, okay. I, I heard some buzzing from somebody's mic, so that's where my brain went. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm disturbing the podcast. Hello, everyone. Oh, he's disturbing because he's a black character, Florian. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yep. What's Lady Jessica going to say about this? <laughs> she hates racism. Her baby told her. Uh, we've also got the Kino Corner. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we static. don't. That, oh, that static might have been That static might have been me. I was moving some chords around. Well, you can blame it on uh, Florian. <laughs> uh, hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> What's up with you? A lot. <laughs> oh, cool. How are you doing? Uh, is that a Joey then, Tribbiani line? How are you is. doing? How are you doing? <laughs> How would Joey Tribbiani exist in the Dune world, E. Rich? Let's hear it. <laughs> I think he would be the Messiah. He would be uh, Lasan Al Gaib, the uh, voice of the outer world. Okay. Well, I am yeah. here to review not just Dune Part 2, but really both of the Dunes, because I just watched mm -hmm. them both back to back. Uh, Aggie and I famously fell asleep watching the first one when it came out on HBO Max, and then we did not keno about oh, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I fell asleep with the second one. Wow. Yeah, wow. I watched, I watched both Dunes this week, so. And I watched uh, David Lynch's Dune as well. Nice. Uh, is that the I superior mean, it's one? Be better, right? Uh. <laughs> Uh, I, I gotta I, see the Spice Divers edit. I saw one clip from it where <laughs> I guess Paul is like screaming at a rock and then it explodes. And I thought that was pretty awesome. <laughs> mm. <laughs> There's some awesome stuff to it. It's definitely a lot goofier than. It's also boring as fuck for the first like hour. <laughs> Wow, well, that's rich coming from a guy boring. reviewing Dune 2021. Characters, characters are literally droning at you for minutes and minutes at a time. The first couple times I tried to watch the Lynch Dune, I fell asleep every single fucking time. What? You, yeah, how, it's how it's a movie. Stay awake here, then. <laughs> it's a it's a movie where there definitely was a lot of studio meddling mm -hmm. in the 1984 one because they cut out like his entire rebellion and they yeah. like put it into a <laughs> montage and a voiceover where they're just like. And then Paul led a rebellion against the Harkonnens and he fell in love with Chani. Uh, okay, fast forward to the water life. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> wow, it's that, that would have saved us this entire movie. Damn. <laughs> well, I want to put this into a little bit of perspective here because Dune Part 2, uh, people are saying it's like the greatest film of all time. It had the highest IMDb score of all time, highest letterbox for a little bit. They're saying, oh, Empire Strikes Back. That's like kitty shit. This is the real Empire Strikes Back. So, Florian, with all this praise, I'd like you to join in. How do you truly feel yeah. about Dune Part 2? Am I the only one who thought it was just terrible? Damn. I mean, I think it's I think so. clearly overrated, but I mean, anybody could say that. I mean, I I mean, if everyone, I mean, if the rating is an aggregate of everyone's opinion, I I don't know if if there's enough people that would agree with any. With well, let's people. hear the common man's opinion from Florian Himsel, yeah. not these pretentious opinions <laughs> that Erich is putting five stars in every fucking letterbox mm -hmm. movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty weak. Okay, so. So this is the movie that started it all, right? This is the this no, it's part two actually. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean this this has like all of the ideas that that ended up being good in other movies, but it like it, I I can't stand any of it. To me, it's like what what am I doing here? It takes so long to get anywhere. I don't like any of the characters. All of the technology is completely retarded, and it goes on forever. Like what? what on Earth is it's, happening? It's in like year ten thousand and one hundred and something. Yeah, so it's, it's beyond your comprehension. It's long after the Butlerian Jihad when humans yeah. <laughs> uh, took off the shackles of AI and computer uh, manipulation and uh, decided to go heavy into space drugs to uh, fold space and time and travel the travel the galaxy. There's like none of that, right? They don't do any traveling in this movie or any folding. Like, well, the whole premise is. A war over the drug that allows yes. you to travel. Mm -hmm. 
Right. The spice well, lets the you. The spice must flow. But mm-hmm. there's like none of the uh, cool stuff that spice can do in this, right? That's because uh, we're, we're stuck in you know, Saudi Arabia for the film. So maybe in Dune Messiah, they'll go out on a space adventure. It gives you <laughs> visions of no, the future, Dune which Messiah is like constantly has. Yeah, oh, yeah. Jesus, mm-hmm. visions. That's all we got. That's so lame. So there's like nothing of, of actual sci-fi interest here. Cool. Okay. Ugh. I mean, there's spaceships fucking exploding and like lasers and like. Yeah, uh, they they like... had that shit in Rebel Moon, E. Rich. You got to try harder. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> And it's yeah, just like I wonder, exploding for no good reason. It's like, Jesus, why? why I wonder, why did, did have... Rebel Moon get more views on Netflix uh, <laughs> than, than Barbie? <laughs> did you guys read <laughs> Did you read his quote? So Netflix <laughs> literally doubles their numbers because they assume every viewer is two people. Well, like, you see, yeah. you see, Monkey, if every household is about 2.5 people, then Netflix can say that every single view is actually 2.5. <laughs> yeah, surely everybody in this household is sitting down to watch Spaceman and they did not mm-hmm. turn it off after 20 minutes because it was joyless. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they well they should have counted the pets as well clearly <laughs> yeah it's it's eyes it's eyeballs so uh, it's does like, my bearded dragon count 15, 15 he eyeballs paid more time. attention than you <laughs> he probably monkey, did monkey in your house will be like 20 eyeballs <laughs> yeah I've got, I've got a whole fucking zoo in my house yeah every oh, cat shit. yeah yeah but jokes on Netflix because I don't pay for that shit I, <laughs> I steal everything they make Mm-hmm. See, but, mm-hmm. So they should inflate the numbers because you do somehow see it without paying for it. Then. Well, I just think it's funny that Zack Snyder legit thought more people saw Rebel Moon than Barbie. Like, that is so embarrassing. It's I mean, also it's, 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 it's also the difference see, between like so makes sense. no, but it's also the difference between like people going to the theater right to actually sit down and they watch it and they pay attention to the movie versus they put it on Netflix while they're cooking or while they're doing something else. And they're sort of kind of paying attention. Mm-hmm. Or it auto plays because you fell asleep. Yeah. That, that can't happen at the movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> you can, I you asleep, can't sleepwalk they, they into buy. buying a ticket. No, you can't. I mean, you, you probably could. And then and just stay for, for the next movie by accident, you know? So that counts as two views if you sleep through one showing <laughs> yeah. and then wake up in the next one? Could I? Look, look, Zack Snyder. <laughs> Zack Snyder is a man of contrast. He talks about how his movie got so many more views than Barbie. But he also <laughs> talks about how the Spartans had gay sex with each other all the time and uh, how that should uh, invigorate well, a warrior group. He also he, he also said that 300 is like one of the gayest movies ever made. And I was like, <laughs> uh, have you seen like any like gay movies there's plenty of way gayer <laughs> films out there than 300 <laughs> well he must be uh, cruising of, oh, al pacino must... in cruising for one i mean like you literally see dudes fist fucking each other yeah or what about movie. like wasted hours that shit was gay as hell <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. like i made the gayest movie ever made all right <laughs> mm-hmm. Zack yeah. snyder can't take that yeah <laughs> can't take that title away from me <laughs> <laughs> I'll come for the king if you best not miss. <laughs> Guys, I want to talk about the difference between Dune Part 2 and the book that I have not read. Mm-hmm. And I should ask, sure. have any of you guys actually read this book? I have. How many of the no, Dune books I, have I you read? I just reading it. I've read all six of the original Frank Herbert books. I haven't read any of the shitty ones that his son and Kevin J. Anderson wrote. Wow, so, that's uh, a harsh yeah. critique of something you've not read even read <laughs> yeah. no, i read the wikipedia well that, summaries for them <laughs> it's it's pretty well known that brian herbert's dunes are like not that great uh yeah it becomes yeah. very like run-of-the-mill kind of sci-fi bullshit so yeah well whereas frank herbert was like i want to make something about eco-terrorists mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. he's like ecology and drug use and e- arabic uh <laughs> culture and uh, yeah. the light of islam spreading across <laughs> I, I saw i saw some tweet where it's like uh don't worry about spoiling dune for me i've already read the quran <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well anyway my what i wanted to bring yeah. up was evidently in the books uh the timeline's gonna be a little bit different because mm-hmm. i guess uh paul and chani actually have a baby together but in this movie, like Paul's mom is pregnant the whole time, so I guess they they didn't know how to yeah, fit that so, in. Oh, she's There's, she's supposed to have given birth. Yeah. Right, so why right, did they not so. do that? 
I think it's because the the like technical difficulty of trying to convince someone that a little two year old running around with Anya Taylor Joy's face is <laughs> what it, what it appears to be. They need to m- m- like genetically modify a baby to have eyes on opposite <laughs> hemispheres to well, make it realistic. Yeah. What, yes, <laughs> yeah. What they did in in David Lynch's Dune is that mm-hmm. it's like this little three year old girl, but they dub I think over she was like five or six or something like. Yeah, she's but she plays well. She, she's great in the movie. So we're like, supposed to believe yeah. that their mission of jihad was like five years, and this movie makes it seem like it was a month, and you just became the god king in a month. Uh, well, no, it's like eight months. No, she she she, she doesn't of the seem water that life, pregnant, right? I, I think water you're... life doesn't she mm-hmm. um, doesn't she uh, mature a lot like a lot faster, and she becomes a fairly powerful Bene Gesserit even as a yeah. Kid. Yeah, it's yeah. essentially you are wow, getting in touch with works. every single ancestor in your female line uh, for Ben and Gesserit. So like she has all of the knowledge of every like Ben and Gesserit that came before her. OK, so yeah, so and, back to yes, my point, though, I got to elaborate yeah. on this. So <laughs> without the the uh, addition of Chani and Paul having this uh, kid together that I guess gets mm-hmm. killed or something and like that yes, kind of yes. creates a super bond between them. Without mm-hmm. that, uh, Chani seems that at the end of this film without that, it, Chani's character seems to have a severe lack of emotional maturity that mm-hmm. she is so like hyper jealous uh, that uh, her boyfriend politically would be better off with the emperor's daughter than some random jihad bitch. Like, you don't understand how this might be important for the goal? <laughs> well, there's some major well, changes to the book going yeah. on here because essentially, major. like, the, the whole the whole kid that they have is, like, basically just thrown off in the book. It's, like, vaguely alluded to that they have a kid. They don't talk about the kid that much. Like, it's not a running issue throughout the book in that section. And then when the kid dies, it's also kind of just like, Oh no, our kid died in this. Let's even fight them even harder. Now it's, it's like not, it's not really. Was this book written by an autistic man? Very possibly. It sounds like so much. He skips over so much of the action and like the actual goings on of the thing. And then just goes right to like the consequence of, of well, things happen. Yeah. Talking about how he treats, how he treats the kid in, in the Dune book, uh, it's no wonder that Brian tried to solely <laughs> his, his IP. <laughs> he very, might not be the most considerate thing. father, you're but, saying. But the other the other thing is that he is supposed to – he and Chani are still supposed to be very much in love yes. at the end. Yes. So my boss is a huge Dune fan, and so mm-hmm. I'm re- I am started reading the book, but he explained everything to me. Right. Uh, so he's supposed to be very much in love with Chani, and Chani's still supposed to be very much in love with him. He takes uh, the, the emperor's daughter as his wife, but he tells her, like, I will not sleep with you. Like, this is yeah. purely a political marriage. Oh, yeah, that's like, what marriage is. Won't. No love, no sex. <laughs> you just get married. Yeah. He's like, he's like, really, for all intents and purposes, Chani is my wife. I'm taking right. her as my concubine. You're my wife in, like, title only. So That's the way to he, do it. Are they going to yes. have a child, though? I mean, that's well, the thing. You not. hold that. They, they won't. Well, they won't no, ultimately. But you hold that over their head. You say, like, one day we could have a child and continue the imperial line. But you're kind of just stringing them along. It's not really anything you're yeah. you're seriously interested in. So the main yeah, mistake he, he, he only does it that, to keep the peace. Right. So he should have told Chani that, that she needs to be ready for him to trade up, you know? It's, you you got to have that talk with the woman, otherwise it, it turns out bad. You yeah, know? otherwise the movie well, ends with her, like, riding off on a sandworm like it's some dramatic, epic thing that she's the final shot yeah. of the movie. Like, oh, I'm sorry that this kid is jealous of her boyfriend. Like, get over it. I think, I well, think I mean, the way... Go, I mean, go ahead, Kim. I, I just wanted to say that, I mean, like, it... It's it seems like, oh, yeah, he's trading up because he's going for Florence Pugh over like Zendaya. (laughs) The thing is, you know, Zendaya is not exactly that attractive. And it's like between Florence Pugh and Zendaya, I would choose Florence Pugh every day of the week. It's not about attractiveness. It's about (laughs) political power. You don't marry a fucking random civilian when you want to be the king. But what I'm saying is like not only is like Florence Pugh more attractive, but Zendaya for this whole movie is just like mumbling and like. And she's just like mad at everything that he does, and it's I mean, a I, realistic I relationship. <laughs> I kind, of, I kind of found it like a one-note performance where she's just always like, "I can't believe you're doing this," and then, she, and then she's like, "You know, I'll support you," and then like she doesn't support him. 
And then when he comes back from the dead, she just slaps him and runs away. Like there's something about oh yeah, they, they, they have that stupid stupid trope yeah, guys, of the, the woman slaps the guy after he was like worried guys, her. He was literally forced to do it by his mom. Like yeah, her, it, his mom well, uses like, the voice on her and makes her do it. So it's I, like how, how many so much manipulation in this movie. How many scenes in this movie is Paul doing something? Zendaya shows up. It's like all like like gets huffed up and it's just like mad and then just like storms out of the room. <laughs> That's like every well, single well, thing. Well, no, no, with no, John because Junior. the first half of the movie is establishing their relationship and making it so that it's realistic that they would well, be so together. It's annoying. And it's that annoying entire annoying time, no, but that entire time he's saying, "I can't go south. I can't do this. I can't." And then as soon as he goes south and drinks the water of life and becomes like the messiah for these people that's when the turn happens like the entire time before then he's been saying i can't do this i have to like be yeah, here with the fremen and like integrate into their culture and then as soon as shit goes bad he like does the thing he said the entire time he's not going to do so like she has a yeah. reason to <laughs> to dislike he's that. a reluctant hero uh you know but the thing is is that they do win uh even yeah. though he was using them to uh gain political power but mm -hmm. But they do win. <laughs> so was it okay that she was a Sundari all along? That's such an annoying trope. I, I didn't that. She was a what all along? A what? Sundari. Oh, that the annoying anime girl that always hates you. But still oh, loves oh, you. oh, oh, okay. Like Asuka. Right. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're thinking um, of Helga from Hey Arnold, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's the best one. And then I guess Pudding from uh, Whole Cake Island is number two. <laughs> and that's about it. Well, it also, it is annoying. <laughs> also, E. Rich, you can yeah. fact check me on this. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't Paul choose this path because, like, the other paths led to, like, humanity's extinction? Oh, yeah. There, there's a lot of stuff in the book about how it's like there, there is a terrible, terrible war coming. And but like the, the, the other side of that is that, yeah, like either the Harkonnens win or fucking the emperor wins and just things keep going on as they are. So it's kind of like he's making the best of bad situations, but it's still leading him towards galactic genocide. <laughs> so did this come out yeah. a little after world war two? I mean, like sixties, like was so. he inspired like the story of Wait, this, this, coffee. this hero who he sees that there's a genocide coming for his people, <laughs> uh, for humanity. So he tries to start a, a genocidal war to prevent it you know maybe frank herbert uh maybe there's 14 words that he wanted to write in the book that he oh, couldn't geez. yeah I'm that's bad. what it sounds like <laughs> now, what is the metaphor supposed to be like fucking middle east like what was going on in the 60s that he wanted to write this i mean it's like it's essentially combining the uh traits of like oil and drugs into one thing making it so that there's an entire imperial infrastructure that runs on this thing the natives of that land control that uh, resource and other countries come to that land to extract them. So, now, isn't like, it sad that uh, it sounds like you're describing today, but no, this is a no, 60 no, years yeah, ago. That's... It's almost like we've been doing the same shit forever. Right. I mean, I, right. I think we're getting off the oil now. I, th I think we're probably not going to need that for much longer. Oh, good theory. George Bush. <laughs> George Bush is the Messiah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> George Bush is the Lasan Al Gaib. <laughs> <laughs> the lasagna okay <laughs> so, so this doesn't work for me at all like if he has okay. these wishes like i i don't see the movie explaining that at all or it being like coherent and explaining I what what do you think needs explained okay <laughs> well well the thing you said if you want explaining watch david lynch's <laughs> you know, i can explain everything. how he gets the visions to you floriot so there is this well, former I mean, targaryen who became the three-eyed crow and now he can send <laughs> he can send dreams to people and he can like warg into different animals and stuff mm -hmm. yeah that was better explained <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't think that has been fully explained yet we're still waiting for two more books to explain that shit well, well the mystery is, is enjoyable at least but in this one it's just like like so he 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 sees the future but then like like what is the point of of the main protagonist seeing the future if, if okay we don't, like, okay so see, florian if we don't florian. see anything interesting <laughs> happening florian, like, why, florian, why doesn't florian, he florian you know the women who are always in veils and shit Muslims? Yeah. The Bene Gesserit. They <laughs> have controlled human breeding for about a couple thousand years in order to find someone who can see the future and can guide humanity through to not be destroyed. 
Yeah, that's so, all cool. Uh, but why, Paul why, is why that person do, who can see Why the doesn't future? he do anything with it? Like, why isn't there a point where he sees, like, oh, here's something that's going to happen, so I'm going to do this, and then we see, like, the cause and effect. That literally happens something. in the last movie. In, in Dune Part 1, he oh, sees he sees the guy at the end stab him, and he dies, and he uses that information to his advantage and then kills that guy instead. So, so, so nothing in this movie, then? I mean, there's... There's plenty in this movie because he's seeing his mom lead him to the fucking destruction of all those people. I think Florian's upset because this is basically like when the Flash showed up in Batman v Superman. And <laughs> like, hey, I'm I'm here to yeah, show off a future movie that will never happen. And it's like, oh, we're getting all these Anya Taylor Joy flash forwards for shit that we're <laughs> yeah. never gonna see. No, we are gonna see it. No, they're fucking one. not. This movie's doing fucking gang. They're gonna do a 25 year time skip. No, no, like 17, 18 years. Anya Taylor Joy cannot play a 17 year old E. Rich. Eh. Eh. That, that bitch is almost 30. Eh. Wait, is, doesn't she play Furiosa Look, in her here's the age thing. when she was young now? Isn't that what we're seeing? Here's the thing Anya Taylor Joy, she's still hot. So I, I, I won't mind, uh, you know, believing that she's an 18 year old, even if she's 30 year olds like play 18 year olds in high school. all the Okay. So how are you going to age up Timothy Chalamet by 20 years? He rich. I don't You're know. Not. Give him a fucking beard. Give no. him fucking like scarring. <laughs> like. Timothy Chalamet with a beard is going to look and fake also, as fuck. And, and also, uh, Denise going to make another movie in between this. So it'll probably be four or five years until he gets to start to make. There's, there's that this movie. great thing called makeup. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm just not convinced that makeup AI. can convincingly make Timothy Chalamet look 20 years older. He's got the babiest face in Hollywood. They, they're gonna he needs have to, to, he just AI needs to gain operation. like 30 pounds. Yeah, he just yeah, needs yeah. to gain like he just needs to get a I little think, bit of a beer belly. I think if you uh, look at the first movie and this movie, he looks incredibly different. Like in between both of them, COVID changed all of us. He rich. He looks incredibly thin and like not very demanding or not very like yeah authoritative and then in this one he's fucking he's doing it he's fucking leading people I, it seemed unconvincing when he said none of you yeah, can never. stand up before me like bro your little twink boy any of these people could beat <laughs> yeah. the shit out of you yeah i was i was convinced i well i was i was i, I was convinced i mean like i mean we see him just like murking dudes before mm -hmm. that yeah. it's not just that he's small but you know he's an agile well, he can fighter. win a sword fight 1v1. He's surrounded by 10,000 people. They could stand before him. Yes, yeah, but like, they've been indoctrinated for their entire lives that this this kid is going to come and save them all. So like when that starts happening, they're like, oh, fuck, the time has come. Like they're cowed by that. Wow, that's just so cock. <laughs> that's what religion does, Florian. <laughs> uh -oh. Okay, I see problems with that. <laughs> so let's talk about the the autistic filmmaking then like th th these <laughs> moments where where we just see some action and then it immediately cuts forward and it's like gone and then we see the result like like for Wait, example what? with the bomb like the bomb goes off and then like halfway between it going off it just cuts to a hand in the ground and then like the the sand slowly comes off that hand and, it, and they like completely skipped like most of that, and they're just in the aftermath of the what bomb. What are you happened. talking about? What are you talking about? I'm so confused. You, you don't you remember see, that? No, when the bomb when the bomb goes off, you see, like they blow up like the side of the cliff, and you see all the chunks and all the sand and like everything like showering down on the guys, and the guys getting crushed. And then and then it goes afterwards to the aftermath. But you see the explosion, and you see there is like you see it all happen. Florian, do you have some kind of like narcolepsy? <laughs> no, well, I, I definitely <laughs> fell asleep for that part, so I, I guess I guess that was just uh, that, that was that that was the shitty version on the internet. Then okay, never mind. I guess I guess mm. that's that's all mm. that was. They must have cut out the casino ad or something. Wow! Right in the middle of that. Uh -oh. a casino ad. You haven't seen yeah, those? Yeah, you have slots, lights, shit going off all around your fucking theater screen <laughs> while you're watching this. <laughs> they, had, they had subway surfers in the... In the yeah, I, I had, I I had to find out what that. happened when I was asleep, okay? Florian, so what fa like, what Family Guy clip was playing while... Uh, it was when Brian got <laughs> hit by the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's just some chicken stuff, you know, where he fights the chicken. <laughs> yeah, that's the ending yeah. of this movie. It's just like... It was the chicken fight supercut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's basically how Dune 1 ended, was a chicken fight. <laughs> I mean that's I mean the the fade and uh 
Oh, Fate yeah. Paul Trades thing was kind of the chicken fight of Dune Part 2. <laughs> uh, that <laughs> reminds me, let's talk about the actual star of the movie, Austin Butler. Who Austin gives, Butler. It's like yeah. the only character I wanted to see. <laughs> like every time they cut to him, I felt like the movie actually started again. There's a cool I'm really glad. gladiator I'm, scene all in black yeah. and white. It's so fucking cool. And and you know, and it's the it's the uh basketball spinning guy from Ned's Declassified. Um. <laughs> Wait, that's him? That's him. <laughs> yeah. Wait, that's that's, that's not Austin Butler. That is Austin Butler. Now he play he did not look play the up. guy who spins the basketball at his finger. But look, look that can't be yeah, him, dude. Is. No, he's not fucking not. <laughs> that can't look, be him. Look it up right now. I'm not right. looking that up. You're fucking lying to me. <laughs> But anyway, Look, that, 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 going... the black and white gladiator. So is the implication there that the film is not in black and white? This is just what it looks like, <laughs> right? Because there was like there was yeah, some was color when it showed other yeah, people. Yeah, it's that they have a black sun in Giddy Prime. So at night, everything looks like normal. But then as soon as the sun comes out, the all like ultraviolet rays like change how you can see color. Yeah, that's so, a like, great idea. To, to When the Bene Gesserit, who, all, who are all in black walk into the sunlight their clothes turn white it's amazing that character's name was not zippy brewster (laughs) zippy brewster okay i'm looking at this and this is not austin and why did it say uncredited i don't know know, but he was in 41 episodes i swear to god the basketball spinning guy's name was not fucking skippy brewster Or Zippy. Oh, no, that's what... Okay, <laughs> I think it's one of my friends who looked up the wrong guy. Mm. Uh, he was, He told me that that was him. So I was right this. all along? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, boy. First year, Ned's Declassified. Uh, Florian, what's your favorite episode of Ned's Declassified? I've not seen it. Did you like oh, when, wait, he, when no. he invites two girls to the prom and he has to that keep going fun. back and forth between the dates? Oh, hell yeah, that's very relatable. <laughs> yeah, that's not Austin yeah, Butler. I told you that's not fucking Austin Butler. <laughs> he, that dude is like 45 now. He can, he's 23 no, filming he's that shit in 2007. Than, no, he's younger than, Austin Butler is younger than me. I'm saying the guy who played the basketball, spinning kid, was 23 in 2007. Do you understand me? He's 45 now. He's not Austin Butler. Uh, Kino is confused. <laughs> After watching this movie, we're all a little confused. Okay, we had a little Kino. too much spice. Yeah, I got it. Kino, drink some on, warm water. On the, on, <laughs> on the Ned's Declassified Wiki, it has that uh, image. Oh no, it's Seth Powers. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If for some reason, Google Images shows Seth Powers when you look up Sippy Brewster, son of Austin. Mm-hmm. Austin Powers. Yeah, baby. <laughs> we should be reviewing those instead. Fuck Dune. Let's go review Austin Powers. <laughs> yeah. Dune so basically, he gets frozen for 30 years, and he wakes up in 1997, and he's shagadelic, mm-hmm. baby, and he, he's a fish out of water, and he's going to- But cancel culture is coming for Austin Powers. <laughs> for Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great film, honestly. It is. Yep. Yeah, like, it's awesome. one of those movies where every single line is just a joke. Like, there's not yeah. one second where they're not making a joke. Wow. It feels like they don't huh. do that anymore, and if they do do it, it's it's like improv shit, and it just doesn't. Oh, it's translate. like the anyway. Ghostbusters 2016, like having a fake <laughs> yeah. argument around the table. Yeah, ten yeah. minutes of I mean, funny I can, improv. I, I can tell you how they do that too. If you rewatch Bridesmaids, you'll see you'll you'll see this when they're doing like their improv lines. It's almost always in a close up, and mm. they'll just like they'll shoot the scene, and then they'll do a close up of one of the characters. And then just keep, and it's not even them improving. It's like a guy who's sitting next to the director, who's coming up with lines on the spot, and the director's just feeding them a bunch of lines, saying like, "Uh, "Say this, uh, say this," and they'll do it for like ten minutes of just random bullshit lines. Mm -hmm. You're telling me Chris Hemsworth is not a brilliant improvisational comedian? (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, I haven't seen him improv in real life, but. Uh, so I, I can't oh. I can't confirm or deny. If they're feeding them lines, then why don't they just write the whole script? <laughs> they have written the whole script. That they is have written the whole script. script. <laughs> but usually I, these scripts I, I, are like not that like... great, and okay. they know that, and they're like, uh, we want to have stuff to work with in post. So 
like on office Christmas party, it was like they hired a writer from it's always sunny oh. to mm-hmm. essentially just sit by the director and they would do these takes that would last like 10, 15 minutes long, just close-ups of actors. And he'd just be like scrambling to write down whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever things he could like think of in the moment. Why does it have to be and written it, down if he could just say it out loud? Give it a, give the paper to the director and the director would be like, <laughs> why? Uh, can you say this? <laughs> uh, can you say this line? <laughs> uh, can you say that line? Did they make you say yeah. anything for the movie? Uh, no, <laughs> no. But uh, that's, but I mean, that's what they do. So, and, and and when you watch these movies like Bridesmaids or films like that, it's really hard not to unsee that. Wait, did they hire uh, It's Always Sunny writer because Charlie Day was in the cast? Like, did he just bring him over or what? That seems it's like nepotism to me. Connect. It's possible that was the in they had. Yeah. Charlie just has a dude yeah. following him around to like tell him funny things to say. <laughs> no, but he I might feel be like, like come work on this movie with yeah. me. Yeah, I I think it was just Charlie just doing a solid. I wish he would do a solid on my chest, to be honest. But all right, Florian, <laughs> do you not like the Harkonnen shit in this with the the black and white shit, and then Bade Rautha getting? Well, you mean, uh, do you like you the fat naked guy? Seduced? Well, I definitely don't like the fat naked guy. He's what? extremely lame. Wow. <laughs> Hey, I'm going to be fat and bald one day, and my cosplay is just going to be daily life, just wearing all black, disgusting. <laughs> Florian Imsel. God, Get and that voice. Oh, can you, I can't believe that that like, works for you guys. Just like <laughs> horrible voice, black, stupid ass villain tropes. Oh, he kills his underlings. Wow. Sure, she'll love it when a villain creates <laughs> Bro, a toxic that's fucking- work environment. <laughs> that's every movie, though, dude. Like, do you have a problem with every movie in existence? Well, tropes are annoying, E. Rich. Yeah, no, I mean, not. come on. <laughs> you want to see the same shit in every movie you watch? Yes, yes, all the time. Uh, well, I think <laughs> oh, we just shit. have a fundamental disagreement. Look, I mean, if you can't appreciate Baron Harkonnen just, like, absolutely ripping this hookah, then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I- there's there's no hope for you. <laughs> well, I He's, like when he when he came naked out of the tub. That was fun. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I love seeing fat men naked. It's like <laughs> yeah, it's like when Peter Griffin gets naked in Family Guy. You don't really see anything. <laughs> well, you gotta see the the black stripping off his butt. You know that that really made it. That was a good scene. If Brendan like, Fraser in his whale makeup did this movie, would it have been better? They should have just hoisted Absolutely. him up on a big, big wire and just like flew him around instead. Of oh, that's how he flew Brendan at the Frazier. end of the, the movie. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, Brendan Fraser was there. He after uh, he gets stabbed, he was just ascended up the stairs, starts floating into heaven. As, as as Timothy Chalamet is stabbing him in the neck, he's. <laughs> People are amazing. <laughs> what do you guys make of the scene where uh, Timmy realizes that Baron Harkonnen is his grandfather and that, uh, like, he's got Harkonnen blood in him? Uh, you know what? That's actually a really, like, uh, scary scene, I think, for Timmy mm. because it means he's probably going to go bald. Oh, cool. <laughs> bald Timmy. That'll, that'll be how they make him look older from Dune Messiah. Yeah. He's, he's bald now. Oh, Wait, no, you're, you're telling me that there's two women now. The, the hero character is, is half Stark and half Targaryen? What the fuck? Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> Holy shit, what a twist. <laughs> well, it, it's funny because the, the Kwisatz Haderach was supposed to come one generation later and he came early, quote unquote, <laughs> came early. Um, E-Rich. Because... <laughs> this is a family program, E-Rich. At least explain the joke so the kids get it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, basically, basically when a man and a woman love each other. Yeah. It's called premature ejaculation. You get too excited by those big old titties and you just start cooming. You bust out You're cooming early, yeah. everywhere. <laughs> And the, the sugar baby oh. still charges you for the full hour. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, she can't All leave right. just because she's sticky. She, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> she can't leave just because she's sticky? Rounds. I mean, if she, if she wants the whole hour, she's going to stay the whole hour. Jeez. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how I have to explain these basic economics to you. <laughs> You're paying for one nut, though. You can use the whole hour for the one nut. Now, what if I never nut? Erich well, just pays them to mm. leave. 
<laughs> they want to be there, but he has to pay them to leave. Uh, I'm cutting right to the chase. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't right. even have sex with them. They keep showing up to his house, and he has to give them money to leave. I'm like, I make them feel awkward. I'm like, what are you doing here? Yeah, please leave. I don't want to fuck you. I got Dude, better shit to do. Gross. I gotta go review the Dune Two review on Izakuna. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, Lady Jessica was supposed to have a girl rather than a boy, but she chose to have a boy because that's what. Uh, Oscar Isaac wanted so you can choose that's Hatterack early oh yeah the Bene Gesserit have like complete control over their wombs oh. so uh when uh, Leia Seydoux gets pregnant with uh, Austin Butler's kid uh she's like done that on purpose it's to c- secure the bloodline and control him is yeah, Leia Seydoux really the like actress it. who got naked in the French dispatch yes indeed okay yep. I approve <laughs> yeah uh, I like how, like, how these... at least at least they got some uh some got know, some action nice some some nice action, you know, with a hot, hot <laughs> yeah. woman before he got yeah. killed. Do you think he prematurely ejaculated? Well, like, uh, I wouldn't be surprised because did you see the women that Fade kind of kept around him? Oh, yeah. Like harpies. You know, and it's yeah. like going up to Leia they do. I mean, that's like that's a huge <laughs> jump. <laughs> yeah, Fade can pull in this movie. <laughs> OK, Florian, your last chance to convince us that these movies are bad. Go for it. <laughs> so so these are just their, their powers she, she can just like have the child she wants wow it's, it's like the latest <laughs> version of the force ever and I can't <laughs> believe they're using swords like what the fuck like swords weren't even used in, in medieval times because use, the shield technology spears. prevents yeah, the use of projectile use... weapons Eris or so sorry. Yeah, the Vikings, yeah, Why the, Vikings, would you... the Vikings used machine guns uh, <laughs> well, well they used axes rifles. and shit but, but in Florian's favor in this film they gave up on the concept of the, the shield like I did not see that stupid effect one time in the movie so <laughs> no, might as well just start no, shooting no, no, no. Yeah, definitely. you can't they... use shields in the desert because it'll fucking pull out worms and you don't want worms all the time well I'm hey, glad that hey, hey, I'm hey, glad they had worms. that excuse because that shield special effect sucked god no, they should have just gotten rid of all the swords well, then if they could use guns that, which is better in the 1984 game or <laughs> if you think huh? that shield special effects sucked you should watch the 1984 dune where, where there's like, like huge <laughs> boxes around them and they're like <laughs> when their arm comes out there's boxes around the arm yeah. bravo lynch yeah. <laughs> in case you missed it there was this this helicopter dragonfly thing and it had a shield but they had to wait yeah they had yeah. to wait for for him to shoot but you saw the hit the the bullet hit the shield, but then it waited there for a while until the shield turned off and then it exploded. So they still had the shields, I guess. It's pretty weird. Erich, what is the Dune explanation for why helicopters need dragonfly wings rather than just a normal rotating blade? because uh, it's cool. There's not like yeah. a sci fi reason why this planet needs a, a certain it, way to fly. It's, it's the future. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even to avoid attracting worms. Damn. I mean, yeah, you can't use suspensor technology because that will draw in worms. So, like, <laughs> if you say, like, repulsors or, yeah, like, things to make them float, they can't use that. Hey, how come the worms are always underground and when they want to eat something, they, like, go straight vertically up? But then if a human decides to ride it, now it wants to ride on the surface of the sand horizontally. Um, that's called, uh, stupid bullshit. Yeah. That's what I thought. <laughs> Completely uh, inexcusable bullshit. Yeah. It's, I, it's I so think in Lynch's, I think in Lynch's Dune, it shows the worms like it. I, I don't know if you ever see the worms, worms coming straight up out of the ground in Lynch's Dune. You know, you typically see them, uh, riding along the surface whenever they put a thumper down. Well, they should have done that here because I was like, OK, I, I guess they only want to skim the surface when somebody is riding them straight up retarded. Yeah, they could so easily get rid of the rider. Or do they love to? Yeah, be they could just go watches? underground and they'd be fine. But no, humans riding me. I got to obey. I'm a giant fucking worm. <laughs> <laughs> well, they wouldn't even notice part two, the human. I got worms. <laughs> <laughs> somebody clean my computer. I got worms. <laughs> Oh, shit. Can you explain to me, E. Rich, and yeah. spoiler alert for everybody, I, I want mm-hmm. E. Rich to pretty much tell me what happens in these six Dune books, because I keep hearing mm-hmm. that it's like the most insane shit, and he becomes it's a worm, pretty, and all this. It's pretty insane. Uh, so, just just spoil uh, it for learn, me. What you learn Super later vaginas. on. 
is that Paul <laughs> is not the Kwisatz Haderach. He is the thing that leads to the Quis- Kwisatz Haderach because his son is the actual like thing that he becomes a half worm, half human, rules over the entire galaxy. Now, how does he do like that? Tyrant. Um, he gets like all of these little worms on him and they kind of like feed spice into his body at all times. Oh my so just, like oh kind of like just constantly tripping. Like he, he's just in a like total trip and he can like see the future and the past simultaneously. Okay. Like, Brian. All at once. No. Yeah. I mean, but this is way before. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I'm just giving you shit. Game of Thrones. Keep going. So, keep going. Yeah. And then he <laughs> becomes this huge worm man. And, uh, you know, uh, Jason Momoa from the last movie. Oh, of course. He gets cloned and he comes back and like he keeps dying. (laughs) He keeps dying and coming back to life because they can just keep cloning him again and again and again. So like when the big worm guy gets angry at uh, Duncan Idaho, Jason Momoa, he just like rolls over onto him and like crushes him. And then they just bring in another one. (laughs) So basically the Germa 6-6 soldiers, the rich. Dune is ripping off one piece yet again. Yep. Yep. Oh, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, and then later on, it gets even crazier because uh, there is uh, sex ninja women who uh, oh. can. Oh, no, can, uh, can we adapt to this part of the movie? I mean, <laughs> this would be like 10 years from now, assuming all oh. these movies. Let's skip made. to this part. Um, and <laughs> they like have destroyed most of the galaxy and are hunting down the rest of the Ben Gesserit. Um, Wait, so like the entire universe basically gets genocided in this book uh yes yes so it seems a little extreme at the end of this the fremen spread across the galaxy and kill anyone who does not convert to their religion it's like a galaxy-wide genocide where billions of people die (laughs) well hold up hold up these people so they're like the underdogs of the story they're fighting against Mm -hmm. the Mm -hmm. (laughs) Hmm. yeah okay So am I to believe that 500 years from now, the Palestinians will actually be the bad guys? I, I guess I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. OK. Well, um, yeah. Don't the sex ninja women have like these like super vaginas that can, like, yes. control men? Yes. Yeah. They can sexually control and dominate men and make them do whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> they also have furries. Um, who oh, are their fuck, like yeah. slaves and then they also <laughs> um, in order to uh, activate a gola which is a clone uh, of an old general guy they like make him as a young kid and then rape this kid in order to activate his like uh, genetic memories of his previous life so adrenochrome it's, it's really fucked up it's pretty wow. fucked i'll tell you that like it, it gets worse as it goes along although yeah when the big worm guy uh takes over as emperor like Arrakis is now like a beautiful paradise planet. Like, there's very, there's very little actual sand. There's like what? a bit of sand where the worms kind of exist. But yeah, like that's the idea is that you wait, wait, st- rich. strangle off. Hold on, hold on. You strangle off all of the spice production. And then he's the only one who controls the spice. And it just goes to who he wants. And he like, he is like a terrible tyrant over the entire galaxy. This is the only yeah, planet the- that you can get spice on. Yeah, he's the god yeah. emperor. Okay, he is the god emperor of Dune. Uh, yeah, what's your question, Florian? So is is all this stupid nonsense part of the bad <laughs> Dune that you, that you said that? that no, the, the no, this road? is still part of the good Dune. <laughs> okay. In in the sixth book, they destroy the planet Arrakis, aka Dune, and it it happens almost entirely off screen. I did well, like the I mean, reveal that, like, the big reveal in this movie is that the planet is actually called Dune. Yes. That, that was pretty funny. Yes. That was so mm-hmm. stupid. <laughs> uh, but go ahead, Florian. What were you saying? Well, so they should have probably definitely skipped over the entirety of this movie, especially if it was already covered <laughs> in the previous movies. And Florian, gone, this is... They should have skipped like the first the, movie. <laughs> well, I, I saw it back in the day, I guess, you know. This is considered to be the best story in the entire uh, sci- science fiction canon, or at least one of them. And then what? this is also considered to be the best of the Dune uh, books. What, just him? So, he peaked with the first sand? one? Uh, I really like the... I like the next one, Messiah, and I really love God Emperor of Dune with the giant worm guy. Because uh, it's literally just him, like, yeah, I want to having see the philosophical. It's just him having philosophical musings the entire time. <laughs> like, at, at what point does rapping. Paul stop being the main character, if any? At, at the end of the second one, the next, the next book, and what'll be the next movie? He just walks into the desert because essentially what happens is he like realizes he gets blinded, 
And he realizes, oh, I can still see. I can just follow my visions and go along with that. What he realizes is he's just kind of trapped into whatever his visions tell him. He can't actually make any decisions on his own. So he just walks into the desert and is like, fuck off. I'm going to fuck off. (laughs) Okay. So so what I really need to talk about is like the mo- the, my favorite scene in the movies is where, yeah. where Drax just brings yeah. in like actual gunships and then he just blasts the, the desert people yeah. and then and then he gets bitch slapped because you're not supposed to use effective weapons you're supposed to show honor and stuff and then like the sand people also say god he just bombed us what a what a crude fool like just bombing us where's the honor like what the fuck so so everyone is just retarded this is just the movie <laughs> did i misunderstand that Eva, so that what you're saying is that there? you're pro-israel well i think we all I knew mean, that i'm, I'm pretty, <laughs> pretty neutral on on israel i guess wow <laughs> oh wow yeah Florian, wow. you're gonna have both sides against you you're neutral oh. yeah well, it's, 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 it's real hard to be liberal i know True. <laughs> uh, I guess everyone wants to genocide someone. Okay. Mm. So I so like why that. Can't, in... Why can't we use effective weapons? I want. So know. Florian, that was not Raban using the like worst weapons. That was Fade. So like Raban was trying to kill them and was not being very effective. So Fade it comes and replaces him, and then Fade is using the more conventional, just like bombing the shit out of them like carpet bombing them essentially yeah and i want to talk about that because there is like this sacred pool where when you die they convert your whole body into water and they pour it into this uh this giant pool it's like oh all of our ancestors water do not drink it don't fucking touch it it's so important Mm -hmm. and it Mm -hmm. it reminded me of like an avatar like oh we have our sacred tree i hope (laughs) that the military doesn't come in with helicopters and blast (laughs) it to shit Uh exact same thing happened i love it when they have like this ancestral sacred thing and Uh the u.s military (laughs) comes in and blows it the fuck the second you see it, you're like, "Oh, that shit's gone." Yeah, they're like, gonna they're destroy that in this movie. Yeah. The, the scene where the scene where Fade is carpet bombing them, you know, to real they they should have had a, a courtesy of the red, white, and blue by Toby Keith playing. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a beautiful. You know, just scene. to honor just to honor him. You know, I mean, he passed yeah. away. This right, they should have played Applebee's on a date night. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So so why can't they just bomb them? Like what what's what's the reason here? They did bomb them. They did yeah, bomb they them. Did. No, I mean the reason why uh Batista got bitch slapped was because he tried to fight the Fremen on their terms and was ineffective. Because he okay, would bring so, down so. troops to go attack them like in hand to hand combat. Yeah, and, and also the Fremen just killed the Fremen all have them. tons of spice reserves, they have like tons of valuable stuff within their sieges so, so that's if why they, they wanted to get bombed. that ah. well yeah i mean you're losing a lot of shit if you bomb them outright like that but like I fate see. is just like i'm just gonna bomb them like yeah <laughs> so that's why they have to use swords damn what a what a shame and also also water is super valuable so like if they just get all that water then they're gonna be okay for however lo- much longer E. Rich, what is the main takeaway for somebody who reads all six dune books like what is the arc of the story what is the point <sighs> Um, it's about guiding humanity through to survival and uh, conquering the lesser uh, urges within uh, the species. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's start doing some final thoughts and some plugs. Kino, <laughs> let's go to you. Uh, so my final thoughts are that I thought Dune 2 was an improvement on Dune 1. Uh, and even though it's almost three hours long, I was pretty captivated the entire time. My the one thing that brought it down for me was I didn't like Zendaya's Chani. Yeah, because like you don't want to fuck her. We heard all about it. <laughs> Not hot enough no, for Kino. Just, no, just her performance was fairly one note, and especially when paired up with Timothy Chalamet, who I thought was doing a really excellent job. You just kind of see that uh, difference and. And performance quality, especially like when they're on on screen together. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I really liked uh, Dune Part Two. Is it the best movie of all time? Like you know, people are rating it to be no, but I think it's a damn good uh, blockbuster film. That uh, um, you know, uh, thankfully we've had a few good blockbuster films this last year. So I'd give it a five bags of popcorn. 
Hell oh, yes. Wow. <laughs> Kino, are you excited for the upcoming Zendaya film where she has a threesome with two white tennis players? You know, uh, I'm a fan of that director, uh, Luca Guadagnino. I really, really what, what has he uh, done? Bones. He did. Uh, Let me buy your name. name. Oh, uh, what the fuck? Suspiria remake. Uh, How does anybody Suspiria genuinely remake. like Call Me by Your Name? It's got to be a prank, right? You guys don't genuinely well, enjoy I, the I, film. I, I, I don't like it. <laughs> I'm not a. I'm not a big fan of Call Me by Your Name, but I. I actually did kind of like the Suspiria remake. I have yeah. my reservations about. Oh, Everidge put it on uh, the the PCP poll. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I really loved uh, A Bigger Splash and uh, Bones and All. So. Oh, Bones and All was good. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. That was I also like Timmy like Chalamet, right? Yeah, that was also <laughs> yes. Timmy Chalamet. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I really liked, you know, those movies. So I'm actually uh, looking forward to Challengers. No, Challengers look stupid. Wow. <laughs> what? You, you want to see a tennis movie? Yeah, I think it looks good. Oh, my God. Really? Based on that trailer, you think that movie looks good? Yeah. Go watch I fucking be good. Battle Mike of the Face. Year or whatever the fuck. Mike Faced is fucking cool. Uh, he was in the West Side Story remake that... Uh, the one that I walked out of after really 10 minutes because it sucked? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the West Side about. Story remake was good. This is like terrible. Yes. Unwatchable yes. trash. I had to leave the no. theater with no refund. I literally would rather terrible. go home and lose the money than watch the film. Wow. Florian, what are your oh final God. thoughts? Filtered. Filtered by Spielberg, of all people. <laughs> Sorry that yeah, Spielberg's right. making shitty remakes of musicals, dude. Like, West Side wow. Story's a boring story. Wow. It should be called West Side Boring Story. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen that one. But, I think that uh, title is... That parody title is more boring than anything Spielberg yeah. did. Uh-oh. That was... One of the worst. <laughs> jokes I'm not joking. It is a West Side boring story. I don't know where the humor would even be derived from. I'm being very genuine. I'm kind of yeah, admired. I didn't a think it was joke. a joke. <laughs> very serious that it was a West Side boring story. That's like, that's like yeah, they, Mad they really Magazine. Change the name to that. You know? <laughs> that's Mad Magazine rejected column <laughs> uh, level joke. I mean, I don't think your hum humor is making the movie any better, E. Rich. The movie still sucks. <laughs> well. Uh, <laughs> wait. <laughs> All right, you, you, you go, you're, or you go for it. Yeah, go for it. All right, so Dune 1 was a boring, forgettable movie, and Dune 2, I probably will also forget, so don't even, <laughs> I can't even make a proper review, I guess, so. But for so. years now, he has remembered uh, DC Super Pets. <laughs> for yeah. sure yeah that's a very important movie <laughs> good, good contribution <laughs> to the DC canon and everything <laughs> uh, Florian what's better Dune Part 2 or West Side Boring Story I actually haven't seen that one that, for people don't, who don't, don't even know, bother I put that, I put that Joker uh, stand up uh, <laughs> image well joke's on you because the Joker's stand up was funny and the audience just didn't get it so points for me yet again <laughs> Monkey literally yeah, every, saying the, every, the gif I was about to post from Joker. <laughs> Wait, you guys don't relate to Joker? I thought the I whole mean, point of the movie was he's a relatable character. Yeah, everything about him was hilarious. I, I yeah, understand. you literally don't get it, E. Rich. You don't re relate to Arthur Fleck? <laughs> he's li literally me. <laughs> I know Kino can't talk shit. I've seen his video about it. It's literally him. Uh, he I, said so. I, I I relate to Joker. Yeah, Erich. Oh, who's who's in the wrong? Who's in the would, the the vocal <laughs> minority now? Erich doesn't relate would, to Joker. Twenty nineteen. Much like Joker, I would spare the life of that little person when he helped me uh, and didn't rat on me when I killed that that guy or whatever. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The little the 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 little man was cool. Mm -hmm. The Dane Cook uh, joke about thanks for the candy. Okay, wow. Rich, what are your final thoughts and plugs? My final thoughts on Dune Part 2 is that I would like to lead a jihad against Florian's anti-reviews channel. Everyone who's <laughs> listening to this, I command you, the voice of Izakino, E. Rich McCoy, commands you to review bomb anti-reviews, lead him to paradise, show him that we will not... <laughs> We will not fucking put up with any criticism for Dune Part 2 or Dune Part 1 For in that case. 
I love these fucking movies. They're like about equivalent to the fucking Lord of the Rings movies. We finally have good oh, fucking do genre it. fiction. Well, uh, Erich, we need the, the real comparison is what's better, Empire Strikes Back or to Dune Part Two. I mean, it's it's not it's not the same thing to me. Uh, like, you I, compared I a parody title similar. to an entire film in terms of uh, creativity, but you can't compare Star Wars to Dune. Fuck off. You can compare them. No, no, because A New Hope is its own story. Empire Strikes Back. You compared is a, a parody movie title one, to a Dune film. One, Dune Part One and Dune Part Two are the same story, just in different movies. Is the thing for me. Okay, so what's better, Empire Strikes Back or Dune Part Two? It's not that hard. Yeah, come on, Dune dude. Part Two. Wow. Okay. Oh, Recency bias. Because Dune is the original Star Wars, uh, and therefore it's better. I don't, a lot of Star bands Wars is that the original Star Wars. Yeah, the Beatles were the original Beatles, but most of the bands that were inspired by them are better. True. Yeah, man, the Beatles are so weak. I agree. Uh, I love that Denis Villeneuve gets this much money to make huge uh, epic films like this. I love that audiences are going for it, too. This movie is weird as fuck in the way that Dune should be. And uh, I love that I have a popcorn bucket that I can fuck anytime. Wait, I want. you got the popcorn bucket, you rich? I did get the popcorn bucket. Do you yes. want to take oh, a man. selfie posing with it for the thumbnail of the review? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <do> that. <laughs> and I'll Photoshop <laughs> Florian into it. It'll yeah. look like you guys are hanging um, out. Mm-hmm. Actually, you should, I the uh, what you should do, I? E. Rich, <clears throat> yeah. what you should do, E. Rich, is hold the popcorn bucket kind of off to the side and have it maybe at like a 90 degree angle. Mm-hmm. And then when Mumkey uh, photoshops Flory, and then he can <laughs> photoshop the end of the popcorn bucket over uh, over Florian's crotch. <laughs> oh, so it looks like he's <laughs> yeah, fucking it while right, E. Rich right. holds it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Is that oh, gay or is it just like bros being bros? <laughs> I mean, no, it's not gay. Like, can you hold up my Dune popcorn bucket while I fuck it for me? <laughs> yeah. No, that that's just called helping a brother out. As, as long as he closes one eye, I don't think it's gay. <laughs> well, I, I would become part of the bucket because I'd be a, a worm man, right? Hmm. You, would, you would become the god emperor of uh, of Izakino. I gotta. It's going to be <laughs> some... E- e- <laughs> going to have extra salty popcorn when he's done? <laughs> <laughs> a thousand years of Vizikino. I've got some yellow liquid for your popcorn, and it's not <laughs> dairy. Why is it yellow? <laughs> oh, nah, it's, it's like, uh, oh, it's piss. It's I thought that Erich's semen was of a yellow tint. <laughs> <laughs> and all the orange. The jaundice has spread. <laughs> oh, no. The it's infected the unborn. <laughs> the spice must flow. Um, yeah, he's just adding some spice to that popcorn, and this boy is like, the spice must flow." <laughs> Beautiful, uh, Florian. Do you agree with Kino that you would not fuck Zendaya? Uh, no, I think that they're pr- they're probably all pretty hot, you know. Wait, well, in the desert, Sean? they're all very hot. <laughs> is that Sean? Is that the one? Yeah, Johnny. Johnny's? Yeah, I, no, no, her name's crazy, Johnny but... in the movie. You guys are mispronouncing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's uh, wait, uh, shit. I was gonna say that's Johnny Rico from uh, Starship Troopers. That's, yeah, that's, that's Johnny hot. Bravo from Johnny and, Bravo. And, and the, the Empress' daughter, like you just see her with this really stupid veil. I have no idea if she's attractive. Okay, so <laughs> she's the chick who was naked in Oppenheimer. Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess that was a she, decent sex scene. And she was in Midsummer. Yep. Talk oh, about mid. Yeah, she was cool in that. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Florence, Florence B's a good actress. I, you know, yeah. I generally like her. <laughs> Agree. That's yeah. fair. You guys want to plug you, anything? I, oh, we 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 haven't even talked about uh, Christopher Walken. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, so what one is one there to one. say? <laughs> He's phoning it in. You think? It's I mean, just he's, being Christopher he's Walken. Retired. He's been basically retired for the past couple of years, and he kind of came out of retirement to be in Dune for like three scenes. So. Well, let me ask this. Is yeah. it is it acting if all of your characters just talk like Christopher Walken? Um, like the, need, Does the emperor in the book talk the, like with a bunch of ellipses? <laughs> the spice <laughs> must flow. Yeah. He should do a, an acting gig where he does a different voice. Did you guys no, what, like? What would be the point of that? <laughs> Just to prove he has range, I guess. Yeah. Well, what what would be the point? Like, he, no, he proved like he would want he, to be Christopher Walken. He wouldn't want to be anyone else. He proved he had range in the Deer Hunter 
Like mm-hmm. he proved it there, and then he could just coast the rest of his career. Yeah, he can, he can do fucking. Uh, What's that Ben Affleck Affleck movie like Gilgi or whatever? He had like a funny a funny scene in that movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that from the flop. He had a a great scene in uh, Pulp Fiction, and he had an amazing scene in uh, True Romance. Mm, yeah, Dennis yeah. Hopper. Is his Pulp Fiction yeah. scene that good? He's like giving a monologue about shoving shit up his ass. It's like it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not like amazing acting, is it? No, but it's. I, but it's, I did it's believe that he shoved scene. that shit up his ass. Because <laughs> yeah. usually the shit yeah, comes he, out of the ass. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, he made me believe. <laughs> uh huh. Erich, what are you plugging you guys, this week? Uh, I'm plugging Javier Bardem's uh, performance in this movie. He's hilarious. Like everything he fucking oh, he's really great. funny. And they just put him all over in memes so you just see his fucking face for every fucking uh, I, I love when i love when uh paul atreides is like uh no i just want to be with the fremen i'm not the chosen one and then javier bardem of course the chosen one the would say he's goes, not the chosen one <laughs> yeah yeah he is the chosen one because the chosen one would be too humble to say that he is. <laughs> yeah, i wish somebody exactly... would simp for me that hard it's almost exactly scenes from the fucking Life of Brian Monson movie. It's yeah. incredible. <laughs> it, it's really incredible. No, the, the whole Brilliant. the whole theater laughed during that because that the timing of that edit was so perfect too. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I know that when they were cutting that, they were probably laughing while editing. having an amazing <laughs> time. Yeah. There's That'd at the very end of the movie it. when he finally kills Fade Rautha. Like, the, there's a second between him realizing he did it and then going, Lusano, and it's like he's like he's like snapping out of it. <laughs> like, like he he just does such a great job. He's so funny. Yeah, it's I, I'm happy to see Javier Bardem in just about anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was funny that he said that he did this for his son and, <laughs> and uh, Little Mermaid for his daughter. Little Mermaid for his daughter, and then everyone uh-huh. was asking. Well, uh, why? Who did he do Lyle Lyle Crocodile for? <laughs> and I actually have the answer. The directors of Lyle Lyle Crocodile are the same directors as Office Christmas Party, and oh, obviously wow. everybody wants to work with them. Wow. True. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I heard good things about that. Actually, I've heard people liked it. They liked That's Lyle Lyle fun. Crocodile. Yeah, Lyle Lyle Crocodile. <laughs> it sounds I like a movie Florian's gonna good. love. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> It was a crocodile. It was singing. It was good. Okay. It, is this did true? Did you guys see this news? Did the Pope really say that Ukraine should surrender? <laughs> Wait, I really? Think so. I, that's yeah. that's crazy. I didn't see the news. Yeah, I, I just saw that pop up. The Pope is like, yeah, Ukraine, just give up. Wow. <laughs> that's pretty give funny. Up, Russia got to him. <laughs> that's the Pope. I'm just glad that the Pope's up. making some decisions for us. He, he's he's going to do the uh, the School of Rock monologue to Ukraine. Just <laughs> give up because the man is going to always put you down. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hashtag well, best boat. I got no dog in that race. Well, so. Yeah, okay. Keep telling us. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, you're totally not. <laughs> no, my family. Nation. He literally okay. has no, a son who lives, lives in Russia, dude. <laughs> no, no. They live in the EU now. Uh, yeah, yeah, Russia. <laughs> no, they they're in the EU. Yeah, Russia's part Are of it. They finally safe. No, no they're, they're not finally... part of the EU. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> what? Oh, no. Did you mean that country that's no, mostly not... in Asia is not in the EU? <laughs> yeah. Shit. They're in the Asian U? <laughs> AU? Well, I think it's like that, a, that's a Australia. Country in, in Europe. Wait, wait, that's the US. I thought Asian countries hated each other. Why would they have a union? Is that why uh, they don't? Well, I mean, there's <laughs> bricks. Hmm? Which is E-R-I-C-S. Well, like the ones yeah. that built the Great Wall? <laughs> the, uh, Brazil, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and... Yeah, the, uh, the Asian country of Brazil. <laughs> yeah, what, <laughs> <laughs> wait, why is Brazil in a, an alliance with those people? They need a B. <laughs> They're the B. They couldn't be Ricks? <laughs> I mean, I don't really know. <laughs> okay. I, I'm not exactly in tune with... You know, yeah. South American politics. So this is not the yeah geopolitical uh, politics chat. Uh, so oh yeah, oh, Erich thinks he's I'm in charge of what the show is now. Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, okay, okay Erich. What are we allowed to talk about then, Erich? Dune part two. <laughs> we'll talk about it next week. Well, too. me and Florian wanted to talk about bricks. Well, <laughs> is it Kino? <laughs> is Brazil Kino? Is <laughs> bricks? Uh, the movie Brazil. You can talk about the movie Brazil. Oh, yeah. I heard it doesn't even take place there, so... Whoa. Uh, what a <laughs> False advertising. Yeah, what a lie. 
I'm going to sue the makers of that movie because I expected to see the country of Brazil. We should sue the country of Brazil for not being in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Imagine, imagine, you know, you guys know the yesterday lawsuit where like Anna Armas was in the trailer for that movie and people were like, oh, I want to see Anna Armas," And then she wasn't in the movie. Oh, what God. If, what if they sued Anna Armas for not being in the movie? They should movie? have. I'd be pissed. Like, imagine you show up to that shitty Beatles movie with your lotion and tissues ready and then like you just <laughs> yeah. blue balled the whole time. Uh-huh. Fuck that. Yeah, it is. I can't jerk I off to watched. the Beatles. I never watched that movie. But <laughs> the Beatles neither. could jerk off to the Beatles. I'm sure they have together while they were high they as did. fuck. They, yeah. They literally did. They, <laughs> yeah, I bet they, they, they fucking did. It. To, quote the, it. <laughs> to, quote, to quote the UK newspaper, beat the Beatles. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a literal headline. It rules. It's one of the best headlines <laughs> that ever I, existed. One of, I think, the best, like, <laughs> stunts by a beetle was by pete best who was their drummer yeah. before he got replaced by ringo star mm -hmm. and after the beatles got popular since his last name last name is best he made an album called best of the beatles which is just his own like original <laughs> his own stuff. oh i get it <laughs> nice and that's uh, a good one people got mad because they thought they were like buying a, a record that was like the best of the beatles <laughs> that's it was incredible best. that's yeah, incredible he's best of the beatles <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah like he wasn't lying. It's like when no, Florian yeah. says that he made Binding of Isaac. Like we all know he he was like he's the Pete Best or whatever of the of the game. Like oh my god, Hard Day's the Night uh -huh. reveals Beatles sex secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Me and John masturbated with the group. <laughs> we should we should do that one time, practice, guys. <laughs> Just all getting us four should jerk off on the baseball. podcast. <laughs> Yes. Is that the real? Is that the real Paul McCartney, or is that the clone Paul McCartney? <laughs> yes, Paul is dead. <laughs> that detests the semen. Yeah, I mean, you guys know that. that Hopefully, it's not Paul, yellow. Like, Paul died in what was it, 1964 or something? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And that they replaced him with a lookalike. That's what they what did to Biden. The, like, <laughs> what is the proof oh, for that? No. Or they're like, what, what are the tells for the like clone? Paul, like what I, are the? I really, the I really don't know. For? I, I really don't know, but I saw in some like image boards where it's like people were like hyper zooming into different uh, features on his face, you know, putting yeah. like the little red circles with the arrows, being like, look how the nose is slightly different. Mm -hmm. Look how the well, ears are slightly different. I mean, it, it could also just age normally. Yeah, that I, I also yeah. just watch yeah. the circles. Yeah. The circles, no. <laughs> yeah hey if there's an anonymous person on an image board telling you that somebody is a clone you better believe uh -huh. it. <laughs> oh for sure yeah. and also the lizard people mm -hmm. uh, you guys people. know my favorite paul mccartney song is the destiny tie-in song hope for the future where he appears as a uh, hologram it's pretty good <laughs> what <laughs> destiny tie-in song what are you even <laughs> yeah, talking about the shooter game destiny <laughs> yeah paul mccartney made a song for that game yeah, right, this is going on forever. <laughs> Florian's yeah, been waiting for sushi for like three hours now. <laughs> your your eighty dollar DLC is paid for this. <laughs> well, Florian, you can have the final word now since you want us to go. Well, everyone, check out my my. my top He's gonna 10 pay games. us to leave. All right, find me out. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Florian made a new Florian. top ten oh. games of the year, and a Bullfrog <laughs> once again did not make it to the list. Tease us, tease us, Florian. What is number seven on your top ten games of the year? Tease the people. <laughs> well, it's a little firefighting game, you know. It's, what does that mean? Well, you, you literally fight. firefight. Fire, yeah, fight you, you're a little guy who shoots water, and then there's yeah. bees that are made of fire. It's pretty cool. Whoa! And see, Florian, he likes to test my friendship. So he'll mm. he'll put things in his videos talking <laughs> shit about me, but like 14 minutes into the video, so I, he, he makes sure I watch the whole thing so I can catch it. That's how he tests you. That's his yeah. uh, Gom Jabbar. His and, Gom Jabbar. And I've been doing that for years, but none of you guys video. have ever pointed it out because you just don't. Yeah. <laughs> none of you guys. Like I, I've talked shit about Erich in every video for the last two yeah. years. I don't watch anything, dude. Yeah, it's like, like I watch all your videos. I watch all your Medea videos. But those are the only ones worth watching at this point. So, yeah, the ones getting the views for sure. <laughs> is that is that like sarcasm? Be rich. <laughs> but sarcasm Flor Florian's me? getting better views than all of us at this point. Finding <laughs> of Isaac video got like seventy k. Yeah. Wow. 
Well, it's still going. It'll, it'll get to 100 one day. <laughs> sure. Hopefully. Yep. You've got uh, you've had videos get 100k before, Florian. Oh yeah, well back in the day, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> when I made like this free DLC for Isaac, you know. <laughs> uh, this review of Dune 2 is now as long as the Mr. Plinkett review of Phantom Menace. 70 minutes, folks. We did it. Hell yes. <laughs> Just as good. Uh, yeah. I mean, but how how much of this time did we spend actually talking about Dune 2? <laughs> Uh, how much time did uh, Mr. Plinkett actually talk about Star Wars? He was mm. bitching about his son and his wife. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and the woman he keeps chained yeah. under in his basement. Yeah, he's, oh, yeah, he, true. Look, and, look guys, uh, I, I, have, I have a really important question about Zone of Interest, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, let's review Zone of Interest. <laughs> let's yeah. just do that right <laughs> now. I need to. Okay, so... <laughs> Basically, when I watched the movie, I saw it in in a in a really small cinema with oh, a really no. small screen, and I was really far away from it. And uh -huh. then the movie has this weird style of, of filming where the characters are really small on screen. So I I, I watched the whole movie, and I saw this was some kind of like cinema rink where you're just supposed to have <laughs> this layer of abstraction between you and the characters. Uh huh. But, but then I I saw that. That it came out on the internet, and then I, I put it on my normal screen, and then I'm like, oh, oh, they're the characters. Hmm. So, Were they like so zoomed I, way, way out or something? What, what the fuck? I mean, like I mean, you should be able to think. see the characters. I mean, there's this scene where where you got like the Nazi rally and stuff, but then like like most of the screen is taken up by the, the side of the house, which for some reason they thought was like important to film. Oh yeah, that's and intentional. Then, yeah. You're saying when yeah, you watched it at home, it was different than that. No, no, it was the same. It's just because the the screen was smaller, so it seemed like I I didn't really. Oh, well, yeah. A lot know, of the movie's I, supposed I to be kind of voyeuristic, like we're just spying yeah, on these people. Yeah, You're uh, supposed to notice that on the outer edges of the shot that the Holocaust is happening. Did you, did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> is that something unusual? I thought it was just about people living in a house. <laughs> wait, wait. They never explained what was happening on the other side of the fucking wall with all the barbed wire. That's they were killing people. It would be hilarious if due to like audio issues and just slight cropping issues, like you didn't notice. <laughs> Well, no, but did you guys did you guys see how that how that movie was filmed? Um, uh, with a camera, have, like, crew. It, no, they didn't have crew inside the yeah, house. They it was had, just like, like camera spread up. throughout. Yeah, the entire house, and it was like a reality show, basically, right? Yeah, yeah. They filmed, it was basically Nazi fish tank. <laughs> it's also known as fish tank. <laughs> okay, so 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 like how how did that feel to you? Like, did you actually like relate to the characters or? Oh or yeah, I, I've related to all the characters and their plight, and you know, I felt for them, and I agree with what they were doing. <laughs> okay, naturally, but but like like there's this scene where where the woman is kind of breaking his heart, where she's telling him, "Oh, I, I'm I'm going to stay here. You do what you want, okay?" Uh -huh. and, and like that scene is filmed from behind, and I'm like, "Oh wow, we're finally getting some emotion after all this time," and then it's like. Oh wow, we, we we're not even looking at his face most of the time. Like, did you guys feel that same way, or or was it was it? Just I, I like don't think it's a movie, movie that's. I don't yeah. think it's a movie that's trying to all make your you heart with in them. Any way. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You're supposed to be it, separated in, from them. Like, in, in yeah. fact, my my biggest issue with the film was when it cuts to the future and you see the museum. Uh, yeah. uh, spoilers! Like shoes and spoilers stuff. for Zone. That was just, that was the <laughs> spoilers. I, I thought that was I, interesting. I, the, uh, just because it's kind of like it's emphasizing something that I felt like already was uh, pretty yeah. like well known kind of throughout the movie, yeah. and it seemed like it this movie that was trying to make this like abstract kind of just slice of life film, showing how these people who are committing this terrible evil can like live relatively normal lives and mm -hmm. separate that from themselves. And I thought that it cutting to the present day for like a few minutes sort of undercut um, what it was going for uh, for mm -hmm. the rest of the movie. Well, I mean, and, it makes sense because it's like the end of the movie. So you're already. But I, 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 I would have rather had it end. like I would have rather had it end without that and him just constantly going down the steps into mm -hmm. deeper and deeper darkness and like to me that that was way more lyrical it's the director really up. showing his hand like it, it is the director yeah. being like 
this is exactly what I want. <laughs> like, and I, I, I yeah, think not using subtlety is a perfectly fine method. It just didn't, it just didn't play. It, it's great. just that the rest of the movie is, is subtle and the rest of the movie, you know, you have to infer a lot of things. And then for like this couple minutes, it just kind of puts everything in your face. You thought, you thought I, the rest you know, of the movie was subtle when it cut, cut to like a pure red screen and there was screams. And... <laughs> well, wait, 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 well, wait, 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 yeah, time but... out, time out. Uh, so Kino's argument here is that the movie was too obvious with its messaging, but he's not telling us what that message is. So please explain <laughs> what is so extremely obvious that the director is doing. The, the Holocaust was bad and killed millions of people. What? <laughs> OK, so you think that we see the guy in 1944 and he's planning out the most effective, efficient way to burn these Jews and he starts vomiting on the floor and we don't know why. And then it cuts to like the future of uh, like the Holocaust Museum. Uh, you you think that is just his way of saying the Holocaust was bad and that's it? Like that's the well, that's the deepest depth you, you go there? No, it's trying to show the enormity of it and how all this stuff still exists to this day. But what I'm saying is that to me, it just would have worked better if it didn't cut to the present, because I thought I personally thought that we got everything we needed from seeing stuff in 1944. Well, I think the parallel of the mundanity of these janitors, like cleaning glass cases full of dead children's shoes and stuff. I think it's a good parallel for the mundanity of their lives. Yeah, I'm not I'm not saying that it was necessarily like a terrible decision or something. It didn't personally work for me, but I, I understood why it was in. I think it worked for me just because that's what is sticking in my mind when I think of that movie is him vomiting in the hallway and then cutting to the present day. Like that I mean, is stuck in my brain. My favorite part was when he was like, he's in the room with all this Nazi leadership. And he's like, all I can think about is like gassing this room and like killing uh -huh. all these people. Like yeah. that is what his mind is like for now. Like you cannot yeah. extricate that bit of yourself because that's now what you do is you. Well, he now, he now see people. Yeah, he now sees everybody as uh, like potential projects in, mm -hmm. in a way, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. or as part of his like genocidal project. Well, a real artist isn't just an artist when they're nine to five. His brain is constantly thinking of art. You, Rich, you just don't understand. Wow. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. like for me, like every second of the day is how can I make this into a YouTube podcast? Right, you know, I, right. I never I'm not even a human at this point. And you're you're just as bad as yeah, I'm as I bad mean, as Hewler exactly or whatever bad. his fucking name was. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The sa yeah, Haas. The, Haas. the saddest thing That's in the it. movie is that Florian messaged us and said, yeah, I looked it up. Haas died a year later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I was like, oh, man, I, th I thought he, he was going so good long, in the Nazi, Nazi empire. Life. Like yeah. even Hitler knew him by name. He's getting promoted. Yeah, what happened in what happened in 1945, I wonder? <laughs> they fucked up the whole operation yeah, somehow. Something, something, something happened. Something, something went down. <laughs> uh, poor guy. What are the chances I mean, he made it to Argentina? Like, do we know for a fact that he personally was killed or what? I just uh, saw it was on Wikipedia that he died, so probably. I, I mean, he yeah, probably I, updated that from Argentina. Girl. Yeah, just, yeah, 50 <laughs> years later. Yeah, he's like, a hoss uh, is definitely dead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I mean, a lot of a lot of those guys, you know, died in 1945, either by suicide or they got, you know, the the right, Russians and favorite. the Americans yeah. got there. And now, Erich, you have famously way. said that uh, yeah. suicide is like the coward's way out. But do you yes. promote suicide for Nazis? I think the Nazis the should be time. locked into a cage and like <laughs> some sort of gas chamber. Yeah. I mean, maybe not a wow. gas chamber, maybe slowly hmm. poison them or something. I don't know. Okay. That's what gas does. <laughs> <laughs> Florian, did you like it at the end when uh, the brother locked his brother in the greenhouse and pretended that he was gassing him? I didn't even hear the gas oh, noises he was making. Uh, yeah, I was also confused for it. I was like, what the fuck? He was just yeah, playing Nazi like his dad. Yeah. yeah, I didn't nice hear the gas bullying noises. Each other. Yeah, yeah, I didn't either. So, OK, I but didn't that, hear the gas. Noises, if anything, so just the like, cruelty of oh. how he's treating his brother is probably yeah, enough. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, it yeah, seeps down. It, it, yeah, it, uh, it's almost like his yeah. Nazi father might not be a good role model. I think that's what they were trying to say <laughs> with the film. I mean, at least he pulled his kids out of that river when all the fucking <laughs> when he found all the bones in it. <laughs> yeah, like oh, there's a human jawbone in this river. Maybe we shouldn't be drinking out of it. Man, hey. you would know, wouldn't you? Like, I don't understand. You would know when that shit was getting dumped out. And you'd fucking know not to go in the river that oh, day or it's whatever. It's an easy like, mistake to make. 
We've all been there. Lord, is that a mistake that you've personally made? <laughs> you can easily mess up your schedule. Come on. Do we have any I final thoughts on the like zone of me. interest, Florian? <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's interesting how much the like the size of the screen made a difference for my viewing experience. So, okay, I, 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 I think on the biggest. He's, screen he's reviewing the screen size. Uh, <laughs> I definitely go to the IMAX for this one. You're gonna, gonna really see like every little detail. You know, the only guy who has a bigger screen at home than at the theater. I mean, I was just closer to it. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> Well, at what point, when you're sitting in the theater, like, oh, I can't see the screen. Maybe I should get up and sit closer. Ah, oh, no, I I'll mean, just sit the people, back. The people next to me also sat there. I don't know. Maybe I, maybe my eyesight is just not as good. Or maybe, I, I mean, I was thinking the movie was just like trying to make it like this, you know, so that you. Or maybe, or maybe uh, you're just uh, one of those sheeple, and you won't, mm. you know, <laughs> you won't stand above and be your own man and yeah. uh, and move. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even consider it was the screen size. I just thought, sure. like, oh, this movie's just trolling me, you know? Florian, when you go to buy a movie ticket, are you buying a specific seat, or are you just buying a ticket to go into the movie? Yeah, it's, a, it's a specific seat, but normally, like, the, the last seat is... Was the theater the pretty packed, or was it yeah, pretty empty? it was empty? full. Uh, it was, it was full. full. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. that explains it. Wow, this movie comes out in Austria, and they cannot yeah, wait. They, they rush wait, to the theater they, to see this. Yeah, yeah. I, I cannot imagine any screening of this in America was sold out at any point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Monkey, my, you my love screen to see here. Your, your family's experience on screen. You love to see, like, your, yeah. Yeah, if they made a movie my, about, like, my great-grandpa yeah. living in Iowa, I'd rush uh -huh. to go see it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is Yeah, it is my, my screen here in Austin was pretty full. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's yeah, Austin, like, though. You guys are full of libtards. Like, here in Iowa, nobody wanted to see Zone of Interest. I was alone in the theater. There was, like, four people on my screen. Just so. me and my brother. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, it's like you don't normally see the Nazis having, like, a normal life. And, and that's not, uh, like, obviously that's that's a thing, right? But, like, specifically if you realize, oh, they, they speak my language and they, they're just like my neighbors, like, you wouldn't get that because you wouldn't be German, right? So it's... It's a whole different layer, even so. So they don't have subtitles in the about. version that you watched. Yeah, there were no subtitles. <laughs> I would hope not. <laughs> English yeah. subtitles on a German language film. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, any other thoughts on the zone of interest, E. Rich? Um. Uh. What did you think of the? Uh, what? 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 What is that vision when the girl is running around and planting food and stuff for people? Oh yeah, that was so. I, I think how was, how is that shot? What, what is that? I, I think. So I think that that's was done. Definitely thermal, right? I think thermal. that was yeah, done. Yeah. Ther yeah, thermal, and I think that ties into this kind of inverted uh, Eden uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like motif throughout the film because it's like their house and their garden is kind of like the Garden of Eden, uh, and the apples. You know, uh, when she because like she's putting the apples down for the the jews and mm -hmm. whoever else is in auschwitz to eat but then you hear that the one guy gets an apple and it actually results in his death uh you think the girl uh, should have been putting home. bagels out <laughs> no i i, I think that maybe it's you know it's like a, maybe yeah. symbolic <laughs> symbolic thing too about how like uh, tying into this motif of like the garden of like this sort of evil garden of eden but then also how the people who are trying to do good, the system around everything is so evil that it only really results in mm -hmm. more more evil being brought. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's how I saw it, at least. I've only seen the movie once, so. I don't know if this is a movie worth watching a second time, is it? Like, I think I got it. Yeah, I feel like I got most everything from the... You know, from the first watch. Yeah. Uh, it, Sandra all, Huller yeah. or whatever the actress's name, uh, she's pretty yeah, great. She's uh, also in Anatomy of the Yeah, she's Fall. Na uh, nominated yeah. for that film, right? Yep. But probably not yeah. going to win. Probably not. We are recording this on the morning of the Oscars, folks. So we are. We've all got Oscar fever really yeah, bad. I'm excited. Terminal case. Yeah. Uh, fingers crossed that Maestro wins Best Picture. <laughs> did, did you did you go on the betting markets? Did you uh, put it all on Maestro? For... Bet, bet my house on Maestro. <laughs> yeah, and Bradley Cooper winning Best Actor. It in. <laughs> Bradley better not let you down. 
Yeah. I'm reading it in. <laughs> now, Kino, yesterday <laughs> you started watching what I would consider the most boring of the nominated pictures, and that is uh, American Fiction. Did you bother finishing that? Uh, I'm gonna finish it. After yeah, that's what this I thought. Podcast ends. I <laughs> if it was it a good movie, minutes. you wouldn't wait days to finish it. <laughs> I, I made it about 25 minutes <laughs> in. It was kind of boring. Very and boring. It was shot. So, it was just like shot so poorly too. I, the the cinematography was super bland. Uh, and it got nominated design, for that, didn't it? The set design what? was like really bland. Uh, everything about the movie to me for just cinematography. What? I think it did. I don't right. know. Let me. Let they, me. They nominated uh, some like bad cinematography this year. Let me. Wow. Let me fact check this. All right. Uh, Oscars. Yeah. Dot org. We must uh, know. Yeah, we, uh, we we really must know. Fucking Maestro got it. No, no, it was not nominated. <laughs> Maestro is nominated. Okay, I guess it, they had some black and yeah. white scenes. So Oppenheimer, of got nominated. Poor Things, Kant, which I don't know anything about that. Maestro and Killers of the Flower Moon were all nominated. Yeah, Oppenheimer's for. winning it. No, Killers might get that. They had some Killers good might. shots in there. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, Killers, my, like, Rodrigo uh, Prieto also, he had two movies this year, Killers of the Flower mm-hmm. Moon and Barbie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it could, couldn't uh, you know, be I, two movies that are more alike. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I liked the cinematography of Maestro. I, oh, yeah, I Matthew thought that was one of its really strong good. points. Yeah, yeah, I thought mm-hmm. that was one of its strong points. But, but I also think that Hoyt Ben Hoytema yeah. has – has a really kind of uh, strong career behind him. And you always have to kind of think too. Has, that he, has he been, has he won yet? I don't it think he's be, won yet. I was going to say, it could be time for him to win at this point. Yeah. So, you know, it, a lot of times with these guys who are, um, haven't won, but they have a really great career. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not just that film that is being judged it's like your whole career or it's right. based off of right. whether or not the oscar voters like him i think know? hoyt is going to win or even saw the film <laughs> hoyt might win because he got the bafta the american society of cinematographers award um yeah like when a lot of these other awards he starts winning for it it becomes pretty yeah because it's the american society of cinematographers generally who are mm-hmm. voting for best cinematography right right yeah so, Florian, what kind of sushi are you trying to get? <laughs> uh, Before we started podcasting, Florian wanted to get sushi. sushi. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just wondering how the the keen audience is just like already aware of who's gonna win, and <laughs> you guys are just talking. Oh about yeah, it. Like, they definitely are because this will go out what like a week, yeah. three days from now. <laughs> I must mm. have a membership. It, it would guess. be really funny. It'd be really funny if uh, um, Holdovers wins best screenplay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at this rate, it should because the allegations are completely false. And I, I've read a lot of this uh, supposed script that it was ripped off of, and I cannot find even one similarity. I, I think the bad thing is that uh, what's his, the director had the script twice or something like that's pretty. Who gives a fuck? It's not even well, the same story but, at all. Well, also, the director didn't write the film. Mm-hmm. Alexander uh, Payne didn't written. write it. No, it was written by David Hemmingson. Well, then what's the allegation <laughs> that yeah, he told that he like memorized attacking. the script and told a different guy to write it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess so. OK, but yeah, he didn't he didn't write the screenplay. So, hmm. But people are like Alexander Payne's movie, The Holdover is plagiarized. It's like, well, uh, maybe accused of I, plagiarism by the guy who's butthurt that Paddington 2 or whatever the fuck movie he's making lately is not going to be a big hit. Hey, Paddington well, two fucking rules. Fuck you. Oh yeah. Well, well the, then that Luca sucked dick. Then okay. Oh yeah. yeah Luca fuck. was not. That was fine yeah, too. Was not. No, it sucked. <laughs> they well, were gonna write I mean, a basketball. Oh. You know, and 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 the thing too is is like, uh, they had he had tried to get I think the Writers Guild. He had like contacted the Writers Guild in January, and I guess the Writers Guild didn't think it was a big deal. It was enough of a yeah. Yeah. So honestly, they, though, I do think this kind of shit happens it. in this kind of shit happens in Hollywood all the time where somebody does a lot of rewriting on a script or somebody does like, I don't know, their ideas are basically taken and used. And because there's no like ability to say, oh, it definitely came from there. You kind of can't credit anyone. So, 
Yeah, I think so accusing somebody trying, of plagiarism yeah. at this point is almost so egotistical and, and like narcissistic. Like, oh, this is my idea that I invented. It is impossible that any of the other 8 billion people could have had a similar idea. So I'm going to complain. How about you go it's, fuck well, yourself? The it's for sure he's, he's taken advantage of the timing for sure. Yeah. But. He's well, yeah, a right, crybaby like, pussy. I looked at his script. It's nothing alike. He should yeah. off himself. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, and right before the Oscars too, and he's butthurt that the WGA like reviewed it and basically said, "Yeah, there's nothing here." Yeah, back in January, and then he comes forward right before the Oscars, and I'm guessing it's like a PR move on his his part. Might be a PR disaster because it's just making me hate him. <laughs> well, we've gone an hour and a half now, folks. We've really beaten Mr. Plinkett. Truly worthy of Dune Part 2, a very long movie that does not feel that long. Yeah, any other thoughts uh, on the zone of interest? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just I liked thinking, it. yeah, it was pretty pretty good, you know, except for that screen thing. <laughs> I'd say it's... Yeah, it's well, that's not the movie's fault. Yeah, I mean, the zone the of interest is, is adequately rated. I've seen other movies. Your cinema, cinema being shit, Warren's like, fault. why did Jonathan Glazer show his movie in this theater? <laughs> why did Jonathan Glazer wipe shit on the wall in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> I had a very <laughs> right die, Florian the die. Of this movie. I mean, I, I assumed that was a very like reasonable feeling that he wanted to convey <laughs> with the movie, but I guess it was purely coincidental in that case. Sure. That's pretty weird. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. See ya. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the longest Kino in a long, long time. Hell yes. Yeah, I just started playing a game of chess, you know? <laughs> <laughs>